so GPT-4, right? Probably using it today and thinking, you know, this model is pretty capable. I could do a lot with it. Maybe you're using it to summarize text, um, write code, debug that code, act like a domain expert uh, to fill in any knowledge gaps that you have, right? Or maybe you're just using GPT-4 to learn a new topic. Now, you might even use it in an automated way, right? Using the API. Maybe you're classifying text, uh, writing sentiment analysis. Maybe you're doing information extraction. Um, all of these things that you can do with GPT-4 are very interesting. But I think, for me at least, the more interesting part is that you can use one model to do all of this, right? At least, I don't think it was obvious before that you could use one model to do all of these tasks. Um, at least not this well, right? And there was one paper recently that stood out to me. Uh, the paper itself is from 2018, but I just recently ran into it. Um, the paper is called DECA NLP, and in the paper, the researchers try to build a single model that can perform across multiple NLP tasks, right? Um, the interesting part that stood out to me was what one of the reviewers said. And I want to quote them, I have it here. Um, There's no such thing as general question answering. All of these questions require very different systems to answer. And trying to pretend they are the same doesn't help anyone solve any problems. Okay, so the reviewer at the time basically believed that um, a general purpose model was not possible, or at least was a waste of time, okay? But here we are heading in that direction with GPT-4, a general purpose model capable of performing very well, right? Across many NLP tests at human level or above. And I think, you know, that, that performance has contributed to the success of the model and the service, right? The increase in demand from consumers, they see the value, they want to use it. Um, increase in interest from companies, they want to compete maybe have a piece of the pie, you know, whatever pie that might be. Uh, but there are downsides to GPT-4, okay? GPT-4 uh, is not cheap. So if you're building a product around it, you'll quickly realize that those tokens are expensive. Um, privacy, okay? Your prompts, maybe they have sensitive information, um, financial data, health data, well, whatever it might be, right, that you consider sensitive, you're probably thinking twice before you send it there. Now, they, they might be locking it, uh, logging the, the prompts. Um, they might be, they might be using it as a, in a feedback loop for the model. You know, we're, we're not 100% sure about that. So you're always thinking twice, sort of, um, at least I am, you know, what's happening with the prompts. And the other thing is reinforcement learning okay gpt4 has been through reinforcement learning um, with human feedback so basically it you know that that process tries to align the model uh, with what humans prefer and tries to remove bias but in that process um you know how can you be sure or whatever they're trying to align it to, you know, wh whatever humans they're trying to align it to are not going on, you know, uh, too extreme on one side, right? Um, it could be too biased, right, uh, on one side. And perhaps it can even refuse to help you, right? Like, uh, you know, if you've ever asked it to do something and it says, I am a large language model, I can't do that. Um, you know, these open source models, they don't exhibit that behavior because they don't, they haven't been through that process, okay? Um, now, what can you do, right? Um, what can you do to fill in those gaps? You know, I, I think the way forward, at least, uh, is, you know, open source models, local models even, models that you can control the generations of and, uh, you know, be confident that the data is secure uh, or, you know, be confident in your privacy. And, you know, the reinforcement learning process 
can also hurt the creativity of the model. Um, it can, in some cases, even hurt the, the performance, right, and the quality of the outputs. Um, if you look on Reddit and Twitter, you'll see that people uh, mention the open source models can be more creative. Um, and in some cases, even produce better responses, okay? So, well, what can you do, right? You, you take one of these open source models, you fine tune it, or instruction tune it, right, on a data set. Um, ideally, you curate this data set, and it's high quality, it's diverse. Um, it includes many samples of whatever task you're trying to solve. Um, if you want these models to perform very well on a specific task, then you uh, get enough samples for that task only, right? But if you're trying to get like a general purpose chat model, right, like GPT-4 style, um, you're gonna need a pretty large data set, number one. Uh, number two, you're gonna need a pretty large model, right? Because if you try to do it on these smaller models, you'll notice that they sort of have a hard time uh, maintaining long conversations, okay? Um, is it possible that small models can perform much better than they currently do? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I think it's possible because, you know, there's a lot more tokens that they can be trained on, a lot more code, right? Um, it's been discussed that code can help reasoning and, and math skills and all these things, which could potentially produce a model that um, can handle more general use cases and longer conversations. But if you want a model that performs well on a specific task, you know, you probably take uh, one of these Flunt C5 models and fine tune it on your task. If you want a model that you can conversate with, um, you know, the GPT-4 style, you try to look at, well, a lot of people are looking at Llama because um, it's a very good model, right? It's pretty much state of the art, but it's not, it's not open. It's not really open source. The weights you need to get approved to even download them then the license is not commercial, right? So, uh, what are your options? Llama aside, recently, um, Mosaic trained a model over one trillion tokens. It's a seven billion parameter model. It performs very closely to the um, seven billion Llama model, okay? It gets six out of 12, uh, it, it beats Llama on six out of 12 of the benchmarks and uh, comes very close on the other six. So it's Apache 2, which means you can use it for commercial use, and you can run it locally. Um, you can run it on a single GPU. The nice thing about a model like that is um, you have full control of it. You can iterate on it and see what happens when you change the data, right? When you change your data set. So, you know, personally, I would um, produce a data set that is diverse, um, that covers the task I'm trying to perform and try it on a smaller model right ideally you try it on a smaller model so you can iterate faster okay and see what the output is you benchmark the model against your um, validation set or whatever you have and, and you see how it performs or you just try talking to it right you see how it performs on longer conversations um, now if you want a model to perform better on longer conversations uh, there's a um, a format called ChatML, which I believe uh, ChatGPT follows, okay? And it's effectively the system user and assistant uh, style prompting. Um, you can look that up, ChatML, and follow that formatting for your model, okay? To see if you can uh, produce a data set that has um, longer conversation style you know, turn-based conversation style, which would help the model um, perform better in, in conversations. Um, you could try that, see how it goes. But again, if you're trying to um, perform one task, I recommend Flunty 5. Uh, I've been using that. It's a good model. You can, you can find some of the smaller ones, see how they perform against your data set and then just scale up and basically when you scale up the model it's just going to perform better that's that's what i've seen it's going to be harder to run it because it's a bigger model if you scale it up but 
you'll probably find a, a balance in between the model sizes that fulfills your task, you know. Um, all right, so, you know, try to iterate on your data set. Try to fine-tune these smaller models and see what you can come up with. I mean, if you can't fine-tune them yourself, I think you can work on the data set and um, contribute to open source data sets um, because there's a lot of people out there right now fine-tuning these models and iterating, trying to improve the performance, make them better at longer conversations. Um, and open source is, you know, I think it's the way forward. So until the next video, be sure to stay in touch, all right?